Good morning. Good morning. Greetings or good evening. Uh, I'm Elton Brunton, and you're with Brightside Global Trade Podcast. And we are delighted to have you with us today. Uh, we have the good pleasure of uh, featuring uh, one of our keynotes today is uh, journalist Glenn Felgate, an uh, international journalist. And today he's featuring his uh, podcast presentation from Cambodia. And uh, uh, wow, I mean, uh, Glenn has an incredible experience background. And uh, he will present to, to us a perspective of his ex his experiences. And uh, we're delighted to have you with us today, Glenn. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you could share, introduce yourself and share with us some specific details about what uh, our audience needs to hear about your experiences. Please, Glenn. Well, thank you very, thank you very much for having me on. Thank you both. Um, yeah, I'm actually sitting here in uh, Phnom Penh in Cambodia um, on uh, overlooking the Mekong River, actually, in my apartment right now. It's, it's nighttime here. Um, I know it's morning over there in the States. Um, yeah, I've been here for about 20, 21 years, actually. Um, I'm a former journalist. I'm British. Um, and uh, I was asked to come over here to uh, set up TV channels. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing for the last 21 years. Before that, uh, I was a Reuters journalist. Uh, during the 90s, covering uh, quite a few war zones, uh, Sarajevo, Kosovo, uh, Africa, um, wars and civil wars in, in Africa, civil strife. Um, I used to go to Davos, actually, World, uh, World Economic Forum, uh, every uh, January for a few years. Um, so, yeah, I've kind of got a very diverse um, kind of background. Um, I'm British, but uh, I left Britain when I was like two years old and brought up in Libya and Kuwait and Malaysia. Um, and then I went to boarding school in England uh, and uh, college in the United States. And then I came back and worked, uh, as I said, with Reuters, uh, Reuters Television. Um, they sent me uh, to far-flung destinations. And after doing that for about 10 years, um, I found myself in Cambodia and uh, setting up TV channels, but not news channels, actually entertainment channels. So you know, when I was with Reuters, I was covering, like I say, war zones and demonstrations and uh, um general uh, you know news and then basically here i found myself uh, putting on uh, kickboxing matches and concerts and uh, and uh, dramas and and things like that so yeah it's, it's been a pretty varied uh, um let's say 30 years or so um but uh, yeah predominantly tv predominantly media um and i'm here now um in in cambodia um I've got my own PR company and uh, I advise some media channels, uh, one of the media channels that I actually set up. Um, so that's me. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's me here <laughs> sitting on the, sorry, go ahead. It's been incredible. I mean, but it's so amazing too, that you know, out of all your travels and experiences and leaving the UK too, and I still hear that British uh, <laughs> angular, angular talk is amazing. And we're delighted to have you with us and your perspective on uh, your experiences and media and, and, and precisely. And also you've written two books, three books, and uh, we wanna help you target and isolate and uh, identify important topic matters in, in that area. Uh, and um, you, we wanna spend a little time just reviewing uh, how you see uh, media and, uh, and also, and I hate to reflect that maybe it's kind of new for you, but we want to spend a little time on AI and what that looks like, if you don't mind, and, and your perspective of the world and the world course. Kind of varying question, but it was some spin back on what you're thinking in that way. Might be. Well, okay, media, well, um, having written books, um, I think the world is going uh, in a direction where uh, the written word is, is probably becoming less and uh, video and, uh, and spoken word is probably becoming more. Um, when it comes to AI, um, I'm not an expert on AI, um, uh, especially here in Cambodia. I mean, there, there are discussions going on about chat GPT over here, um, mm -hmm. and there's uh, a lot of pros and cons for it. Um, I actually do PR over here at the moment, mm -hmm. and when I do speeches or, or PRs, I can say that at the moment, chat GPT isn't there and uh, AI isn't there, and I think it's probably because um, people don't know what uh, instructions to put into AI, to be perfectly honest. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I've heard things like, uh, for example, uh, a friend of mine was saying that when he tries it, um, uh, it, it when, you know, when it, when it spews out an article, 
Um, in the article, it says according to sources. But when you ask what the sources are, I'm told that you know that they say, "Oh, we're not sure," or whatever, something like that. So I'm not an expert on AI, yeah. um, but it is, I think it is the future. Um, I think Paul McCartney, I think, just uh, created a uh, um, an ex Beatles yeah. uh, Beatle song with uh, using John Lennon's vo ex voice, you know, his his voice uh, from before. So, uh, but uh, but I'm no I'm no means an expert on AI, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah. I have actually written a book here in Cambodia, at, um, you know, and uh, about my experiences here. I kind of it's um, it's called Put It in the Chicken. Um, yeah. The reason I've called it put it in the chicken is because Cambodians here often get uh, chicken, uh, the word uh, chicken and kitchen um, uh, messed up, um, mixed up. So, uh, you know, sometimes they'll say, oh, well, put it in the chicken. And so, but when they actually mean put it in the, in the kitchen or the pantry or something like that, um, mm -hmm. like that. So it's kind of a bit of fun. But it actually, um, the book that I wrote is actually um, um, about my um, setting up TV channels here. I was asked to set up a, a TV channel and... Uh, um, after about a year and a half, it became the number one TV channel in a market of seven. And uh, and then basically I was asked to set up another one and another one. So I ended up setting up three or four TV channels here in the market. Um, but really the book is kind of fun. It's kind of like written in the style of Peter, uh, Peter Mayo, um, uh, A Year in Provence. And it's kind of an Englishman getting to grips with the culture here in Cambodia and some of the funny instances and the misunderstandings that we've had. Um, and I wrote it as well to kind of... Um, um, when I first got here, there was quite a lot of negative stories about Cambodia. There was, you know, a lot of stories about Khmer Rouge and uh, and and corruption and and things like this. And there, there was nobody, I think, really talking about, you know, the warmth of the Cambodian people and the fun, um, you know, that that you know that people have, and you know, the fact that they're actually, uh, um, in a way, that you know, they 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 could be struggling to you know to survive, but they're also they're, there's also a lot of humanity here as well, and a lot of warmth and. Uh, um, fun uh, and uh, you know they enjoy life quite frankly so um, so that's why I wrote the book I mean it actually started as a fiction book because uh, being in Cambodia and uh, you know I, it was called uh, Put It In The Chicken I don't know uh, sorry it was called From Phnom from, uh, from Penh With Love mm -hmm. um, but then there was a group called We Love Memoirs and so I who, who they read memoirs so I actually thought well I'll write rewrite it particularly for that group um, so I rewrote it for the group and uh, it was about 50% of it I had to rewrite because the first uh, fictionalized account was pretty much uh, um, a memoir anyway. Um, so it, it's kind of like fun and it kind of uh, talks about my experiences, uh, you know, with Cambodian people and the fun, fun we had. We, we put on the first international concerts. Um, we, uh, you know, we, 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 did, we did the first reality TV shows. Um, you know, we had, uh, you know, I even televised kickboxing, uh, um, cockfighting at one point. Um, like, like, you know, like I'm sure it's not politically correct, but we did. Um, so, but anyway, it was kind of like talking about, you know, some of the uh, experiences we had here in, um, you know, in Cambodia, setting up the TV, TV channels, which were a lot of fun and uh, quite a lot of achievement, I think, as well. So um, that, that's the first book. Well, I mean, I didn't want to put you on the spot there, but do you uh, actually possess the leading uh, viewpoint in terms of what the audiences in your community may need? And uh, also, and to put it more succinctly, everybody's trying to discover themselves with AI right now. And so not to be a leader in that way shouldn't depress your viewpoint, but you can be a leader when it comes to community and also the media development. And there's so many questions that need to be answered. And quite frankly, ask right now because we're in a place where, and you, uh, it seems like you, you're writing everything. That's good. That's good, and it, it, it's a and maybe there's a leadership position to be held and should be isolated that need needs to be uh, uh, reviewed. And it's an important time, and you're an important interviewee. Uh, you know, we play a key role with what tomorrow looks like, and uh, and uh, our uh, smaller, a uh, uh, burgeoning communities as well as the major communities. What directions we need to take like that, and so. So uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that, but then right now let's focus on your books. You've got the three three to four books out there that you uh, see important to the, uh, your community and uh, the world market, and uh, and also getting an audience that can uh, view view the importance of your writings. You know, so uh, this is an amazing time, Glenn. It's really as much as, and it's also very <laughs> a treacherous and fearful time 
because what does all this mean? And where do we go from here like that? And so, but as a leader, as media development, uh, everybody, every community and every culture now has to decide what role will we play? What's important for the next steps? And how do we manage, you know, our, our, our tomorrows? And so, so you, I, I really appreciate your writings in the books, and uh, put it, and uh, the the angle, put it in the chicken is the culture, put it in the kitchen. That's yeah. interesting that way. Yeah. That's very interesting. I, I can't wait to wait to read it, and our audience yeah. could get a very big interest in terms of cultural perspectives about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, one question too: over the last, how how have you seen the change of the culture over the last ten to fifteen years? Has it been Swift and speedy, or is it uh, developing with the uh, the right management capacity to it? To be perfect, it's quite amazing. I mean, because if you think about after the Khmer Rouge, uh -huh. um, I mean, this country was destroyed. It was at year zero. They called it year zero, um, uh -huh. and basically, it was zero. It uh -huh. was uh, basically Pol Pot um, turned it into a uh, totalitarian, like agricultural state and okay. emptied out all the cities and everyone went uh, off to the countryside, right? So, but mm -hmm. killed millions of people. Mm -hmm. um, but so it was, when I got here, it was just kind of coming, you know, getting, you know, it's, uh, getting off its uh, knees, if you know what I mean. So uh, mm -hmm. it was basically, so it's risen up, you know, quite considerably to go in the last 30 years, I think it's gone from like basically uh, absolutely destroyed to progress. And now Cambodia takes its place in uh, ASEAN um, just had the Sea Games here, which is the Southeast Asian Games. Um, had Joe Biden here um, uh, before um, for ASEAN. He came for an ASEAN summit. Um, that wouldn't have happened, you know, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, but it's happened, you know, now. Um, so uh, Cambodia is starting, I think, to take its rightful place in Southeast Asia, in ASEAN. Um, and uh, there's elections coming up, and they're quite controversial. And I don't want to speak too much about that, but, uh, you know, that's, that's very political. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, there's been a lot of progress and, you know, there's talk that Chinese money has been coming in and helping that progress. Um, but uh, yeah, it's quite, it's quite significant. I mean, I remember when I first got here, the, the Intercontinental Hotel, I think, was the highest building and I think it had 20 something floors. Now you have, you have skyscrapers, you know, all over the place, you know, 50 ah. floors and whatever and stuff like that. So uh, the skyline has definitely changed. Um, the development, I think, has changed. I think the question is, does it filter to the countryside? You know, people are, you know, are still probably living as they were living, you know, before. And but that may be because they would like to keep it simple and keep it traditional. I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, so but uh, there's definitely a lot of progress and development here. That's for sure. Oh, that's good. But you play a key role in that. And depending upon your perspective and how it can develop and the cultural dimensions, you know, I mean, because I mean, in terms of, you know, who knows, uh, uh, we're not in a position to see or we can't see into tomorrow but um the right value systems play a key role i mean and if the community has and possesses the right value systems it could be a, a very important leadership capacity with that and so uh, the, your, your perspective matters and it is value there and who knows with that with that and, yeah. and what tomorrow looks like mm -hmm. and yeah i mean Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. we really want to thank you for your contributions because um, you probably play a big role in Cambodia and for all the great work you. So let's touch a little bit about your experience at Reuters and then we're going to wrap this interview up. I know mm -hmm. it's really late night for you, but we've got a lot of people coming on the show, but I will schedule another interview and uh, we will spend some more time and, and, and talk about the war and all those details because... It's a miracle that you survived and you can tell the story. Uh, so just let's do a summary of your experience with Reuters. And what is your current day experience for the UK? Any message for them, uh, given all the, that they're going through? And then we'll wrap the segment up and get into our second group, which is our food and drink segment. Uh, okay. So we'll end the TV personalities and the film segment. Okay. Okay, well, I was a Reuters uh, television news agency journalist, which kind of means you're, you're behind the scenes. Um, Reuters is an international news agency. Um, it's like Associated Press, like Agence France, uh, Agence France Press. Um, 
we basically wholesale news, or we used to wholesale news to broadcasters around the world in Reuters television's case. Um, so a lot of the pictures that uh, um, of you know, places in Africa or in Bosnia, you probably would have seen, you know, and I would have played some role in it at, at some point, to be perfectly honest. So, yeah, I used to go to Sarajevo during the war, um, 1994, 95. Um, that's when I was there. The war started in 92, 93, I believe. Um, and also Kosovo, I was there. And then I used to go off to Africa, places like Sierra Leone, um, Congo, uh, Kin Congo, Kinshasa, uh, Congo, Brazzaville. Um, usually when there was trouble, to be perfectly honest, I used to uh, you know, go with a crew over there and uh, we used to operate out of hotel rooms, out of makeshift bureaus. Um, one, one time I was sleeping on the, uh, the veranda of a, of a general, a winning general in Congo. So yeah, it's a, it was a pretty adventurous time, a dangerous time. I've lost a few friends along the way, uh, two in Sierra Leone, two very good friends. In Iraq, I've been to Baghdad twice, uh, lost a friend in Baghdad. Uh, Unfortunately, so yeah, so um, yeah, it was a pretty, uh, um, how can I say it? It was an adventurous time that, uh, you know, and uh, a challenging time, um, but, you know, I wouldn't have changed it for the world, to be perfectly honest. And, and we worked with top correspondents, uh, some of the top correspondents' names that you probably know of now. Um, we were behind the scenes, but we were, you know, as Reuters, you're, you're an information service as well. And so uh, you're providing information and uh, news to, you know, to, uh, some of the big name broadcasters and publications, et cetera, like that. So, yeah, it was, uh, I did it for 10 years um, and I left of my own accord, uh, to be perfectly honest. But um, yeah, we, I had some hairy experiences. I had some great experiences, great camaraderie and uh, great friends who are friends to, the, uh, to this day. And, and I've written a book about that, which is actually doing the rounds with publishers. It's called You Won't Know Us By Name. It's not out yet. Um, I hope it does get out someday. Um, but at the moment, it's kind of doing the rounds of publishers, and I've shown it to a few agents um, like that. So, yeah, so that's what I did for 10 years, yeah. One more question, uh, as we wrap up. You, now you play a, a key role in the leadership development for media, but before you were kind of behind the scene, you know, in the role of cultivating perspectives about the worldview uh, of how countries see Cambodia. You know, the dichotomy of those two positions, you know, I mean, it's probably easier because apparently you know, somebody liked the way you were writing and they wanted to put you out front. Uh, do you see yourself? I mean, uh, it's what you've been, uh, what your position has it made the difference that you have wanted to when you uh, first started out? Well, okay, okay. if you're talking about, okay, well, I mean, to be perfectly honest, when we were Reuters, um, I think uh, certain incidents uh, that were you know, broadcast probably helped stop wars, especially in Sarajevo. There was a market massacre, which was uh, 50 something people and a colleague of mine you know, got to the scene so quickly that the pictures were so horrendous, the footage was so horrendous that um, I think Bill Clinton basically said enough is enough and uh, NATO actually went in. Before that, there was UN and they were not doing much. Uh, well, not when I said not doing much, they didn't really have a mandate to do too much, to be perfectly honest. There was no peace to keep at the time. Um, so peace had to be imposed on the war and factions. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're Reuters when we were, you know, doing cutting edge news, um, some of the world's top news stories, I think the pictures and the footage had an impact. I'd like to think so, to be honest. Here in Cambodia, it's a bit different because, uh, you know, we were doing, you know, and more entertainment. So for example, uh, but one of the channels was a channel um, I helped set up called My TV, which uh, was, you know, quite progressive. And I think it had a, had um, it, it kind of influenced the youth um, probably a bit, and it was a lot of K-pop and Korean um, bands and stuff like that. So it probably influenced trends. Um, nowadays, I think it's more social media. It's less TV, and it's more social social media that probably influences uh, trends now. So TV is probably less relevant, I think, because everyone's watching YouTube, Facebook, and uh, everything like this. So yeah, so uh, so yeah, so yeah. I'd like to think that uh, we had some impact for sure. Very good. I tell you, I we could sit here and talk all well, morning yes, with we you, Glenn. But we're out of time. But we'll schedule another time to sit with you and discuss more the, the, some of the key positions. I really, really appreciate you being with us this morning. Your insight, perspective, and your discussion and relevant points add great value. And uh, we commend you for the work you're doing and uh, want to, to be a part of encouraging you and your work and. Also, whatever we can do to help you get your books out there and to promote them to the audiences that you're trying to target, 
would be more than willing and 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 favored to do so. And so in that regard, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being with us. Well, you're welcome. We didn't speak too much about the UK, unfortunately. 